Okay, welcome back to the second lecture on BC 111, our course on uh, faith. Um, I apologize for the poor audio in the earlier class. I, I hope this everything is fine right now and you can hear me clearly. Um, so towards the end of the previous class, we uh, when we were talking about uh, um, um, using our shield of faith against the the fiery darts of the wicked. I just shared a little uh, incident about you know a pastor's conference and uh, how one of the pastors manifested and so on. And then uh, Prince asked the question, "How could a pastor manifest?" Right. So, so um, here's the thing. Uh, and so I'll just take a few minutes to answer that question, and then we will continue with our uh, course. So uh, a, a believer cannot be possessed by evil spirits, a believer. But a believer can be troubled, disturbed, or we would use the word oppressed by evil spirits. Right? So maybe, so like, if we don't keep up our shield of faith, then it's possible that the enemy has some entry point because the shield of faith is not there. They're not standing in faith. The enemy has an entry point and then the, they can trouble the believer. So the believer could be troubled in their body or in the mind. And... Uh, when we are ministering deliverance, and you will learn this in, in the course on uh, ministering healing and deliverance, I think, or also on, on the course on believers' authority, you will learn this um, about ministering deliverance. Now, when you, you are ministering deliverance, the manifestations that happen when somebody is possessed or when somebody is oppressed, the manifestations look the same. They look like the same because they are troubled. In one case, they are troubled by evil spirits. In another case, they are possessed by evil spirits. But when you're ministering deliverance, it looks the same. But the condition is actually different because a believer cannot be possessed. A believer can be troubled. Uh, so that's what must have happened in the case of this pastor. Uh, I don't know him. I never, I, you know, but um, he must have been troubled for whatever reason in his life. I don't know. Uh, in that same meeting, in the youth meeting, in the youth, like our youth were ministering. Uh, and then we had a prayer time and some of the youth came for prayer. And one of the youth came and this man uh, or this boy, I shouldn't say man, but this young boy, a uh, young man. Uh, he had actually, he was actually a believer for 10 years. He's actually serving in his church. He was standing in line. And uh, they brought him. They said he's feeling suicidal. I said, okay, I'll pray. Uh, the moment I laid hands on him, he started manifesting. So he's been serving in his church for 10 years. Right. But he was having suicidal, uh, or to say, tendencies, suicidal tendencies. So the moment I lay hands, it's ah, that sort of thing. So then again, you rebuke, rebuke the evil spirit. So this is another example where he's a believer, but he's troubled. He's not possessed. He's troubled. And in this case, he was suicidal, disturbed in his mind, you know, feeling suicidal. But the manifestation was just like as though he was possessed. But it's not. It's not. Just trouble. Okay? So we shouldn't confuse it too, but that, that's how it is in the ministry. You will learn about it in... Um, there are two courses. One is the course on healing and deliverance. Another course is on believer's authority. So in these things, we should cover that. All right. Let's get back to our lesson so far on faith. Let's go forward. Um, online students, I will pause, I'll come back and I'll look at your questions, so feel free 
to ask questions. All right, number seven. So we're talking about the believer's walk of faith. That means, what is the role faith has in the, in the, in the daily life of the believer? Right? Uh, we're mentioning different things. So number seven, it says, uh, we, we learned this. We exercise spiritual gifts. We minister God's power. And we see miracles by faith. So if we want to uh, exercise spiritual gifts, so we, we will we have, you know we will learn about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. All the gifts of the Spirit are available for every believer. So all of us can flow in the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit are like our toolbox. You know, God has given it to us like our toolbox. We use that to serve people. But how do we serve people with those spiritual gifts? We have to. Do it by faith. Yeah? Romans chapter 12, verse 6. Paul writes, he says, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our So he says, when you want, when you prophesy, that means you're speaking by inspiration. God is inspiring, you're speaking. So when you prophesy, he says, how should we do it? Let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. So it takes faith to prophesy. And the more faith we can have in God, the more we can prophesy, the more uh, release of the prophetic we can experience. So there is faith involved. By faith, we prophesy in proportion to, or we prophesy by or through faith in God. Right? We can look at another passage in Galatians 3. Um, Paul is writing to the believers in Galatia. And he tells them this. He says, I, I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Okay. The answer is implicit. He's asking a question. The answer is implicit. Right? He says, did you receive the Holy Spirit by the law or by faith? The answer is obvious. We receive, they, or they receive, and we also receive by faith, not by the law, by faith. So we don't keep the law to receive the Holy Spirit. No, we receive by Faith. And he continues, verse 3. Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Then we skip to verse 5. He says, He who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? That means when you supply, or you can look at this, when you minister the Spirit, and when you minister miracles, healings, miracles, whatever, supernatural, how do you do it? Do you do it by the law or by the hearing of faith? Answer is by faith. Okay? So the essence of what Paul is saying here is when we want to minister the Spirit, when we want to minister healing miracles faith is involved faith is involved so for example you know when you have to pray for the baptism of the holy spirit for other people okay so all of you you know you're going to do it someday when you know when you are maybe you're pastoring whatever you're doing you will have to do this you have to pray for other people to receive the holy spirit how will you do it it's not any technique it's not some method you follow. No, it is simply by faith. So what you will do? You have to explain from the Bible. You have to share the word of God, saying, see, as a believer, God will pour out his Holy Spirit on you. You take them through the scriptures. And then what you do? You have to pray. Pray for them. Lord Jesus, baptize them with the Holy Spirit. This is not a technique. This is not a method. It is simply by faith. 
and then you expect them to start praying in tongues. How does it happen? I don't know. <laughs> How will what word language they will speak? I don't know. What words will they speak? I don't know. But I just know that God pours His Spirit out. And when we pray simple prayer in faith, God will make it happen. It's not any technique, it's not any method. It is simply by faith. So when you minister the Holy Spirit, how do you do it? By faith. When you pray for the sick, how do you do it? By faith. Not some technique or some... No, just have faith in God and pray. When you prophesy, when you call out words of knowledge, when you... whatever, the gifts. How do you do it? By faith. It's not some technique. You know, you learn how, okay, how to listen to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is speaking, so I will speak, right? But it is not something from our own. It's just by faith. So, to minister, the, uh, to minister in the supernatural, to minister in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, to minister the Spirit to other people, we do it by faith. By faith. Okay? So that's again another reason why we need faith. You can look at Acts 3.16, you know, in Acts chapter 3, um, uh, Peter and John, uh, they were walking into the temple and there, here was a man who was lame. Uh, he'd been lame for 40 years. And that particular day, uh, as this man was begging, uh, Peter and John, they say, look upon us. And then Peter says, uh, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he, the man began to walk and leap and run. And uh, Peter explains in Acts chapter 3 and verse 16 how it happened. Notice what he says in Acts three sixteen. It says, his name through faith in his name has made this man strong whom you see and know yes the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you oh. a faith in his name the faith which comes through him. So how, how did you minister? So people are wondering, Peter, what did you do? How did this man become well? What was it? Some formula? Some? What did you do? Peter says, his name. And faith in his name. That's it. It's the name of Jesus. And faith in the name of Jesus. And that too, this faith is what God gave us. Faith given to us from God has made this man perfectly whole. Okay? So, once again, how did, how did healings take place? How did miracles take place? Through faith. So, you know, that's another reason why we minister in faith. Finally, number eight. Last point in this lesson. Number eight. What is the role of faith in the, in, in, in the life of the believer, in the believer's walk of faith? Number eight. We must fight the good fight of faith. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. Paul writes, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith. So why does he say good fight? See, there are some bad fights. You should not even be fighting those fights. not worth fighting. But fight the good fight. That means this is a fight that is worth fighting. It's a good fight. Some other fights, don't even get involved. Not worth your time. 
not worth your energy. Just leave it. Stay out of the fight. But this fight is good to get in. Fight the good fight. It's the fight of faith. It's a fight where faith is involved. This is a good fight. Fight the good fight of faith. A good fight is a fight that you always win. Right? That's why it's called a good fight. You're going to win here. This is a fight worth fighting. You're going to win. Fight the good fight. But also means that there are enemies. That's why it's a fight. There are enemies. And of course, we know the enemy is the devil. He tries to disturb our faith, weaken our faith, distract our faith. But you fight the good fight of faith. So I'm not going to give up. I'm going to fight this good fight of faith. Okay? So what do we do in this chapter? We just looked at you know, a list, a small list, eight points, of the place that faith has in the life of the believer. It's very important for the believer to learn to walk by faith because only when you, you know, you're saved by faith, you receive from God through faith, you overcome by faith, you have victory of the enemy by faith, you resist the devil by faith, you uh, see, receive the Holy Spirit by faith, you minister signs and wonders and miracles through faith, and also you fight the good fight of faith. Okay, any questions before we get into the next chapter? Let me just pause here and check the online chat. Any questions? Everybody okay online? Everyone's, everyone's with me? Okay. Let's go to the next lesson. Okay, thank you. I see your response on the chat. Thank you, everyone. Let's go to lesson number eight. Sorry, lesson nine. Lesson nine. Okay. So now we want to talk about how to nurture faith. How can we nurture our faith? So let's look at two passages. Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 2 to 4, and also verse 8. Paul writes, We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. So Paul is saying, you know, we are praying for you, Thessalonians. Remember, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, your labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God our Father, knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. For from you the word of God has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place. Your faith toward God has gone out, so that we do not need to say anything. So what is Paul saying? He's saying, you know, he's commending these believers. He says, hey, I'm remembering your work of faith. So these believers, are working their faith. That means in faith, they are doing many things. And he says, your faith toward God has gone out. That means many people are hearing about your faith in God. Oh, these believers in, uh, in uh, Thessalon Thessalonica, they are wonderful people. They have great faith in God. They are doing many things by faith in God. Okay? So he's commending them as he's writing his letter. He says, you know, we are, we are so happy uh, to learn about your work of faith. We are so happy and uh, everywhere, everywhere people are talking about your faith with God. But then look what he continues in chapter 3. This is what I want you to pay, pay attention to. In 1 Thessalonians 3, verse 9 and 10, he says, For what thanks can we render to God for you? But all the joy with which we rejoice for your sake before our God, night and day, praying exceedingly that we may see your face and perfect what is lacking in your faith. So notice what he's saying here. We want to perfect what we want to perfect what is lacking in your 
faith. So he has commended them about their work of faith. He says, hey, there are you believers, you've got wonder, you know, you're doing a wonderful work of faith. In verse 8, he's saying, you know, uh, your faith toward God has gone out. Everybody is hearing about your faith in God. But then in, the, in, in chapter 3, he says, we are praying because we want to come to you. And we want to perfect what is lacking in your faith. That means we can still nurture our faith. Even though we are uh, serving God already, we are working our faith, uh, we are maybe doing a wonderful uh, work of faith, we are doing wonderful things, but we can still continue to perfect our faith. Yeah. There could be some areas in our faith where we are lacking and we can perfect. You see, I started learning about faith in God when I was 14 years old. Long time ago. <laughs> but even today, I'm still learning. Still learning. And so, oh God, I need to perfect what is lacking in my... I am not perfect in my faith. So even today, I keep listening, I keep studying, I keep meditating, going to the Bible. I still have to perfect, still keep need, still need to keep nurturing, keep growing in my faith. Our whole life, our whole life, we have to live by faith. We can never say, oh, I am perfect in my faith. We can never say that. Now, till, till our last day, we have to keep learning, keep nurturing, keep perfecting our faith in God. So we never stop learning. We never stop perfecting what is lacking in our faith. So we can become stronger, we can increase, we can nurture our faith. And uh, I also want to point out one more thing. To the same believers, to the same people, in the next epistle, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, notice what Paul says. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other. And we ourselves boast of you among the churches for your patience and faith. And all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. What's he saying? He's saying your faith grows exceedingly. They are still continuing to grow in their faith. In, 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 in the first letter, he's, he's, he's praising them. Oh, you're doing wonderful work of faith. Oh, everybody's talking about your faith. Wonderful. But he says, there are some things lacking in your faith. We want to come and we want to perfect that. We want to you know, build you up in those things. And then in chapter 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, he says, your faith is growing. So it's not like these people arrived at some place and said, oh, we are wonderful people of faith. We don't need to nurture our faith. We don't need to grow our faith. No, they were still growing. And especially, you know, they were facing a lot of hardship. They were facing persecutions and tribulations. And so he was commending them for their endurance and faith. So what, I, um, so what we want to learn is how to nurture our faith. And then we will, we will have another chapter, another lesson. We will talk about how to develop strong faith. Right? How to nurture our faith and how to make our faith strong. We will learn these things. So I'm going to just share some simple things, simple things on how to nurture our faith. Right? Some of these things we are already familiar with, but we need to keep reminding ourselves. Number one, 
Nurture your faith with the word of God. Nurture your faith with the word of God. In another lesson, we'll talk about how to develop our faith, how to make it strong. Here we're just saying, you know, how do you nurture? What, what, kind of, what can you do to nurture your faith, to feed your faith, to, uh, you know, make your faith? What, what can we do to, to make our faith stronger? So first, nurture your faith with the word of God. Why? Because Romans 10, 17, we know it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So every time you and I think about, okay, I need to feed my faith. See, in the physical, if you feel tired or you feel weak, or it's, okay, I need to eat something, right? Or I need to drink something. So you're feeding your body, physical body, to nurture it, keep it strong, keep it healthy. Similarly, for your faith, you need to feed your faith with the Word of God. So the Bible, the Word of God. Because faith comes by hearing. Right? So uh, the word there, Romans 10, 17, the word is rhema. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the rhema. Rhema is utterance. It's a present tense. It's a word that is spoken. It's a word that is uttered. Right? God is speaking. So God is quickening his word. Maybe it's from as you read the Bible or as you listen to somebody. Or you can even hear the word from your own mouth. So one of the ways by which you can nurture your faith and hear the word of God is through meditating in God's word. Meditate in the word of God. Right? So there are three things in the process of meditation. So when we say meditate in the word of God, does it mean you go to the Himalayas, sit there? That is not what we say. Yeah. Biblical meditation. You will learn about it in uh, this course. We talk about the Word of God. Oh, I think it's in another course. Anyway, you learn about meditation in the Word of God. Meditation in the Word. It involves three things. Right? It involves contemplation, visualization, and confession. So, biblical meditation. It involves contemplation. Contemplation means you think deeply. Think about the word. What are you reading? You ponder. You think deeply on the word. Then visualize means you let it become part of your imagination. Because a big part of our mind is our imagination. So you let the word of God become part of your imagination. And then confession. Oh, that means your declaration. What you are saying. Right? So the way... They used to practice. I'm talking about, you know, uh, the Jew, Jewish people, the Hebrew people. When they practice meditation, they would actually wear a shawl over their head to cover out, cut out all distraction. Cover your head. They'd be in a rocking position. Close their eyes, rock back and forth, and recite the scripture. So what's happening? Their mind, their imagination, their hearing, this, everything is focused on the word of God. So example, if I sit down, I say, close my eyes, just cut off all the distraction. I say, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He will bring forth his fruit in its season. His leaf will not wither, and whatever he does will prosper. Okay. So like that, I... If I keep repeating these three verses, example, I just, I just said it one time. But if I 
I'm focused on that word and I keep repeating those verses. Or I can repeat even one verse. Example, I could repeat Psalm 1 verse 3. Just one verse. He will be like a tree planted by the words of water. I close my eyes. I'm meditating. I am meditating on that verse. My contemplation, that means my thinking, my visualization in my mind, I'm seeing a tree planted by rivers of water. I'm, uh, you know, my imagination is focused on that. What does that verse say? And my confession, what I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying that verse. So if I just focus on what I'm doing, I'm meditating. That is biblical meditation. Are you understand? Because your thinking, imagining, and saying is focused on the scripture, the verse, the word of God. And when you do that, you know, and, and, and usually I, I do it with my Bible open. So I may turn to a scripture, I see that, and then I say, God, I thank you that you said this. You know, and I, I'm reading that verse. My eyes, I'm focused on that verse and I'm just saying it. Oh, I might read it two, three times. I'll just pray over that. Or sometimes, you know, I, I can do it without opening the Bible. I can just say the scriptures, however you want. But meditation in the scriptures, what does it do? It's nurturing your faith. It's nurturing your... Because faith is built on the word of God. Sean, you have a question? Go ahead. Sean, I can't hear you. I think this fan is too loud. Okay, just say, say a little louder. Sean, please. Okay. Mm. Okay. So Sean's question is, when we are meditating in the Word, are we uh, sometimes... Uh, the, 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 the doubt is, am I using my own understanding or am I looking at it with the wisdom of God, with the illumination of God, right? So here's a simple thing, right? Which I would encourage all of us to do is when we read the Bible, when you go to read the Bible, just pray a simple prayer. Holy Spirit, help me to understand the word. Holy Spirit, give me revelation of the words. Simple prayer. That means it's like what the psalmist prayed. Psalmist prayed in Psalm 119. I think it's verse 11. He said, O Lord, open my eyes that I may see wonderful things from your words. That means, you know, we are saying, God, I need you to help me understand your words. So we pray that prayer. Usually, when I pray the prayer, or when I'm going to read the Bible, or when I'm going to uh, even prepare my sermon, uh, that's what my prayer would be. Say, Lord, you guide me. You inspire me. I don't want to do this. Uh, Psalm 119, verse 18. Yes, verse 18. Thank you. Um, I don't want to do it with my own understanding. Right? So we pray like that because when we do that, we are inviting the Holy Spirit. We are inviting the Lord to be our teacher. Right? Then um, you start reading the scripture. You start studying the scripture. Now, of course, we use our minds. You know, God has given us our mind to use it. And... Uh, we have to follow the basic um, rules in reading and interpreting scripture. So we learn about that in uh, our next semester class we'll, about hermeneutics, how to interpret scripture. We will learn about that. So we have to follow those rules in our mind. But at the same time, we are depending on the Holy Spirit. He will give us. He will inspire us. So uh, my answer would be, it's a combination of both, right? We have to use our minds, but we also depend on the inspiration or illumination of the Holy Spirit. 
and then you meditate on it okay? and then god will take you okay i hope i answered your question somewhat okay <laughs> thank you all right so meditate how do we nurture our faith you meditate in the bible you take scriptures you meditate another another important part is to sow the miracle seed okay to sow the miracle seed what does that mean you see um god's word is like seed how do we know that parable of the sower you know remember jesus gave us that beautiful parable he said a sower went to sow the seed and some seed fell on the wayside and among stones and among thorns and then on good ground and then he's jesus explains the parable he says the seed is the word of god the seed is the word of god or the word of god is like seed so if you want to imagine this bible is a bag full of seeds huh? because the word of god is like seed so you're carrying your bible hey you got a bag full of seeds because <laughs> the word of god is like seed but if i have the seed inside the bag it's no use no use what i have to do i have to take the seed out of the bag i have to put it on the soil but this seed has to be put on the soil of our heart right so i have to open the word of god i have to read i have to put that seed in my heart and one of the things the seed does is it nurtures my faith it it produces faith it you know faith comes by hearing the word so this this seed of the word will strengthen our faith it will produce faith in our hearts so think about like think it think about it like that if you want example you want tomato what seed you'll sow tomato seed you won't go so green chilies and say expect tomato to come it won't happen you want chilies put green chili seed tomato tomato seed what else uh huh mango <laughs> mango seed <laughs> whatever so if you want faith for healing you read the scriptures on healing because that seed will produce that faith if you want faith for provision in your life god to supply your need what do you do you read those scriptures my god shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory or second corinthians 9 8 god will make all grace abound toward you that you're always having all sufficiency in all things will abound to every good work right so you begin to read those kind of what are you doing you're sowing seed according to the kind of harvest you want if you want to build up faith for healing sow those seeds if you want to build up faith to receive knee um, uh, provision for your life sow those kinds of seeds you want faith uh, to overcome to have victory in your life sow those kinds of seeds you want faith to overcome fear sow those kinds of seeds because the seed will produce after its kind are you with me so two things we said how do you nurture your faith with the word of god one is by meditating in the word you just read it meditate in it and second you sow the seed what kind of faith you want you sow the seed in accordance to that so you nurture your faith accordingly let's just look at two more points here secondly how do we nurture our faith we nurture our faith by being part of a community of faith 
So be a part of a good community of people of faith, you know, like your local church or your life group or your small group, whatever. Be a part of that community. It could be just three or four people or it could be many more people. That's fine. doesn't matter. But when you have people around you who affirm what God has done for us, it strengthens our faith. You know, Philip Philemon, there's only one chapter, Philemon 1 verse 6, he says that the sharing of your faith or the fellowship of your faith, it becomes it may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you, in Christ Jesus. So you acknowledge the good things. When people acknowledge the good things that are in you, in Christ, then our the sharing of our faith becomes very effective. So when you look at, when, you, when you're part of this kind of a community where people will affirm the good things that are in you because you are in Christ Jesus, what happens? The fellowship of our faith becomes effective. That's meaningful fellowship. When we affirm the good things that are in you because you are in Christ. So you acknowledge those good things. So be part of that kind of a community. And lastly, you nurture your faith with testimonies of faith. So as you hear testimonies about what, how, what God is doing in people's lives, uh, you hear you know, testimonies of healing, of provision, uh, of uh, people who step out in faith and they uh, are able to do great things. Uh, you know, those testimonies encourage your faith. So the Bible tells us, you know, uh, uh, to talk of all his wondrous works. So we talk about what God has done, of what God is doing. So we talk of all his wondrous works. And uh, we declare his mighty acts. We say, you know, this is what God has done. We praise his works. Um, and, and then it, and as we talk about it, as we share testimonies of it, it nurtures our faith. So three ways to nurture our faith. Nurture your faith with the word of God. Nurture your faith by being part of a community of faith where people will acknowledge the good things that are in you. And third, share testimonies. Listen to testimonies. Share testimonies. What God has done, it will encourage our faith. Okay? Let me pause here. Any questions? Let me look at the online. Any questions so far? Anything of what we've done today? Everyone is okay? All good? Okay, thank you. I see your comments in the chat. Any questions? Those of you in class. All good? Okay. So, we're going to stop here for today. Uh, we'll pick up with lesson number 10 uh, next week. Move forward. And at some point, I'll give you a little exam to cover, um, to, for you to study. So review all, whatever we've studied, the first nine lessons, just review it. I'll, I'll let you know. We'll give a small exam just to, uh, all my exams are open book, open Bible. So you can fully look at your notes and write the exam. I just want to make sure you have learned, uh, you understand. So it's not about you. Memorizing things is just about you understanding truths. So uh, I'll, I'll let you know when I, as soon as I put it out there, um, you could just do that. Okay. Okay. Come on, Rimmel. Come. Let's pray. Okay. Rimmel, Rimmel is going to B or V? V. Rimmel is going to lead us in prayer and then we will close. Please come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for this wonderful teaching, Lord Jesus. Lord, today we learn about how to build our faith. Today we learn how to uh, how, uh, faith is like seed, and we have to we have to sow the seed in our heart soil, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we pray, uh, Lord, build our faith in your word build our faith 
whenever we fall uh, whenever we go through the situations uh, dark situations uh, through the fire through the rivers lord jesus we have faith then we can walk uh, we can walk and we can do all you want to do with us lord jesus thank you so much for this day and thank you so much for teaching lord jesus lord jesus thank you so much for pastor ashish and thank you so much for all students we are learning lord jesus thank you lord thank you so much you heard my prayer all glory belongs to the name of jesus in jesus name i pray amen thank you thank you everybody we'll see you again next week god bless amen bless you see you again so thank you